Hi everyone. I thought I would do a new video here on my Coleco Atom. Um, I had won a new item for it, so I wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, I just won this uh, Atom 160K uh, floppy disk drive. I uh, got a really good deal on eBay. It was really dirty, but it cleaned up pretty well, and it uh, seems to be working. Um, now, the Atom itself uh, does come with uh, one high-speed digital data pack drive. And uh, you see, I've added a second uh, thanks to Millie at RetroSystemRescue.com. Um, he does some great uh, things over there for the Atom. And I purchased some digital data packs off of him. Um, and that's fine. The digital, the digital data packs work really well. Um, he does good copies of them as well. But there's still a medium that uh, tends to have uh, faults, whereas they can overheat, they can melt, they can break. It's still uh, not the most reliable way of uh, using the Atom. Now, you can see I do have a... a, a Ultimate SD cartridge from Atari Max. Uh, actually, I have uh, two. Uh, I'm actually doing some testing for Steve uh, on his uh, device here and helping him out, which I'm more than happy to do. And you can see this one's in my modified ClickerVision where I've installed a new power switch, LED, and it's also running F18A uh, VGA enhancer board. And I'm also trying to get working, I haven't got too much time on it, is an expansion module number three, which just gives me a black screen. Uh, so hopefully I can get that working and that'll go on this guy here so I can use some Atom with some VGA out. But let me get back to the main point of this topic. So I was looking for ways to get other uh, software onto the Atom. Again, uh, Millie at RetroSystemRescue.com is great, and he can definitely help out and do a lot. But there's some other things I like to do myself, especially I like tinkering. Uh, as you can see, um, I'm using the keyboard cable here as the AtomNet cable uh, for the drive. It didn't have a cable. So I actually made one right here uh, with a Cat5, I'm sorry, Cat6 cable and RJ11 connectors. Uh, it's basically a reverse telephone. Uh, you, the pins get reversed when you come over, and that works well, so I'm kind of happy with that. Um, so how do we get the information from an IBM PC to an Atom? You would think it'd be just copy a floppy from a PC and put it in the Atom, and you're all set to go. Well, it's actually not that simple. And let's go upstairs to my uh, computer upstairs to kind of see what is really entailed on copying files from an IBM computer over to an Atom computer. Okay, now don't, don't everyone get on me what a mess I have over here, first of all. Um, to get this to work, it really required a lot more tinkering than I thought. Um, this will be cleaned up later, but I wanted to get the video going as soon as possible. So this is an old desktop I've had for a number of years, probably around 98, 99. But it's still a quad-core computer. It's running Windows XP. It's got plenty of RAM. I figured it shouldn't be a problem. I have, I have this drive here, which has a, a 720, 1.44 plus a 1.2, 360K drive. I thought piece of cake. I'm all set to go. And it's running Windows XP. I'm like, that's okay. The programs are supposed to be DOS-based, but it should be a problem. Now, in the Atom forums, uh, they say that you can't do that. You really need a 360K drive, and it's got to be MS-DOS. And I got to tell you, they're right. Um, don't bother trying unless you don't have the following items. The uh, 1.2 360K drive, although, yes, it can read 360K disks, they're not very good or reliable at all at writing them. Um, it's twofold. The drive heads in the drives themselves, and also the floppy media. When you purchase floppy disks, um, most of the ones you'll find will probably be you know, formatted to 1.2 megs, and those are not going to be good. Um, I got some to format, uh, but not format with what they call system on it. They always failed. And that's because, believe it or not, the actual medium itself, the tracks are broken down slightly differently, as well as the drive heads. You have to make sure that the floppy disks you get are actual, true, formatted 360K diskettes uh, to make sure it's reliable. Um, again, I tried 1.2s, and it was very hit and miss. So far with true 360K disks, it's been going great. So on eBay for about $12, I got this uh, Toshiba 360K uh, floppy disk drive. And um, it was pretty dirty, but again, it cleaned up pretty well. And... Um, what I like about it, too, is you put the disc in, close the door, you do that, and now you can't open the drive and get the disc out by mistake. Not that it would happen too much, but you do need a real uh, IBM-compatible 360K, 360K floppy disk drive. Uh, and then when that's done, you have to be running MS-DOS, not Windows. So I didn't have another drive available to me right now. Um, I have two in here, and I didn't want to change what was on here. I did have this old, probably from like 1997. It's a SanDisk uh, 440 megabyte um, flash drive. Uh, it's a well, well precursor to the other things you have today, but um, it works. Um, I had to convert, I had a device here to convert the uh, 1.2 inch floppy to a 3.5 inch floppy, 
then I had to convert the IDE, the IDE interface into SATA, which you can see is here. So I installed MS-DOS and I have that all running on my computer here. Um, we have a 360K floppy drive with a 360K floppy disk in there. The next thing you do, there's a couple different programs. Um, one is called the EOS, and this basically lets you format diskettes. I've already formatted this one uh, already. It's all set to go. And then uh, we have a bunch of disk images here. And uh, the next thing you do is a regular uh, program called dcopy. And you put this command in here, which is dcopy. Now, Super D, I'm assuming it's Super Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Jr. I don't know because they get truncated. Dot disk. And we're going to go to the A drive. And we set the tracks to 40 because it's a 160K disk. And uh, S colon 8 and H1, which is heads is 1. And the S is something else. I'm sure someone down below will make a comment of what that is. But once you, again, have a IBM-compatible computer running MS-DOS, at least I'm running version 6.22, and a true uh, IBM 360K drive, you can hit Enter. And we're going to make sure it says, make sure the disk is formatted. And the disk is formatted already, so here we go. And it's copying the different sectors. And it's telling you the total capacity will be 163,840, uh, which should be a 160K drive. And let that go. Doesn't take very long being only a, a small uh, diskette like it is. And it's completed. Now, if you do a directory here, the PC is not going to know what the, oops, I'm sorry, directory of A. So we want a DIR of A. The IBM PC is not going to know what the heck it is because it's not in its format anymore. So it'll give you an error here, which is fine. So we'll hit fail on that. We don't care. We're going to now take this diskette when the drive light goes out. And we're going to take this over to our Anim computer, and let's see uh, if we got a Donkey Kong version on here. I'm not sure which version of Donkey Kong, but let's go find out. Okay, we're back to my Anim computer, and we have this diskette which we just created on that IBM PC. Now, I'm hoping this is going to work. I did one before I made the video, or only one before this one. Uh, but let's see if it works. So we're going to put this in the drive. And we're going to close and lock it in place. And next thing you do is just reset your Atom. And once that's done, it'll search the drives and any Atom Net devices uh, for something to boot from. If it doesn't, you come to your typewriter. But let's reboot. And you can see our drives going. And look at that. We have Atom Presents Super Donkey Kong. Just like that. So again, the process itself is not hard. But you have to make sure you have the right materials. You definitely cannot get away with a 1.2 meg floppy. And you can't get away with not having uh, MS-DOS with the utilities that are currently available. Now, once again, I want to add that Millie over at Retro System Rescue. Let's get this game going here if we can. Let's see if we get this started here. There it goes. So you can see it does work. But what I was going to say was that Millie over at Retro System Rescue not only can make you uh, digital data packs or floppy disk images, if you can't do this yourself, because again, it gets a little expensive doing this kind of stuff. He is also working on a device that will link your Atom over to a PC, and then the PC will be thought of as either a digital data pack or a disk drive. So he's something he's definitely working on. He's very uh, into the Atom and the community, and he's a really good guy. And I will be the first in line to purchase his device that will allow my IBM computer to simply mimic or emulate the digital data packs or disk drive. But until that day comes, I now have the ability to make them. And hopefully with this video, you kind of get a little idea of what's involved. And uh, if you want, and you're able to get one uh, disk drive, we have one already, you know what you need to get it going. So again, uh, again, everyone, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate all my subscribers. Um, you guys are great. I love the comments. And um, I love everyone in the community. Everyone in the ClickerVision community and actually all the communities I'm involved with are really a good group of people. And I thank you for watching. And please, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. And have a great evening. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good night, folks.